Food from Wood. This is the name of a scientific research project of the Zurich University for Applied Sciences in Wedenswil near Zurich, where we would like to find out whether we can reorganize the decomposing process of wood-based plant material so that we can produce food for humans with it. And it's meant to do that in uh, mostly two stages. First, that we uh, inoculate uh, wood with uh, mycelium of edible mushrooms and after the mushrooms have eaten up their part of the wood-based material, we present the rest of the material to edible insects. And at the end of the process, we can find uh, pre-palletized uh, excremental pellets of the insect that can be used as a good gardening soil. Yes, uh, if we could eat the raw wood, that would be very good, because all of the problems with food in this world and hunger would be solved immediately. Wood is the most abundantly produced material on the whole world. It's estimated that all the plants together produce each year 28 billion, European billion, tons of wood. If we would um, break it down to how much it is for each uh, human living on this planet, it would be around 3,000 tons of wood for each uh, citizen of this planet uh, Earth. 3,000 tons. That's uh, around 1 billion liter oil. That's the amount of energy that the plants um, collect from the, from the sun and store it in the chemical form of uh, cellulose, lignin, let's call it just simply wood. Um, yeah, it would be nice if we could uh, use this energy inside of this wood for our own well-being. I mean, around 500 grams of this uh, beech wood would uh, cover all the needs we have for uh, the energy intake for one day. It has around 2,000 uh, calories. If we compare it to a, a normal bread, it's uh, double the energy of this 500 gram bread. So we thought, let's think about um, how we can produce in a sustainable, resource-friendly, climate-friendly way, and most efficiently, food from the energy that is stored inside of, of this wood. And we just do it in these two processes with mushroom edibles and with edible uh, insects. First, the inoculation of a normal piece of uh, massive wood is very easy. You just drill some holes into the wood, put some dowels, wooden dowels, into the holes. The dowels, they are already uh, inoculated with the mycelium of a mushroom, of an edible mushroom. Now we have to um, give them some time to grow through the whole block of, of wood. And then, um, if we have inoculated this pile of uh, beech wood, we have to wait until we can put them into a garden, like you see here. It's in the, in the park garden of the Zurich University in Wedenswil some uh, oyster mushrooms you can see here. Um, this is the place where people go to see what we can do with mushrooms. There's another example of a restaurant near Zurich. Here you can see it. it's also the oyster mushroom just uh, growing on the big uh, wood pieces that have been digged into the, to the gardening soil. It's a very easy way to produce uh, these kind of mushrooms. They grow abundantly. Around 30% of the weight of the fresh wood you can harvest in the form of these mushrooms. Here's a Pleurotus pulmonarius. This is one of the most simple of all the 
all the mushrooms that we know until now can be grown not only in Europe in temperate regions but also in a, in a, in a tropical climates uh, like in Africa there are a lot of projects that uh, deal with this Pleurotus pulmonario that loves also warm uh, temperatures. Now then after the mushrooms after three to four years has eaten up all the lignin inside of this uh, wood piece, only the cellulose uh, is left over, so that's what makes them shine a little white, whitish, and that's uh, why it's called white rotten uh, wood. Half of the weight of the wood is gone, it's eaten up by the mushroom, and what do we do now with this? So if we look into the nature, we see that first car arrived the stag beetles. And I show you one of the stag beetles. No, not one. It's the stag beetle. It's a beautiful, wonderful, nice and big stag beetle, Lucanus cervus cervus. Um, you can not see it very often in Europe because it all only is flying around at dawn. Females you hardly see because as soon as they have made it, they dig into the soil and lay their eggs near um, hidden white rotten pieces under the surface of the soil. But this beautiful male here is also part of a research project about the life cycle of Vulcanus cervus here in Switzerland. So when uh, stag beetles eat up this white rotten wood, they just the larvae dig into the substrate. That's what you can see in the next video here. Um, when we uh, open a piece of wood where stag beetle larvae are, we can see uh, things like this. Here you can see the whole material is shredded and inside a little oval shaped chamber here is a larva that prepares for pupation and in the next picture you see the adult it's a Prosopocoilus girofa from Indonesia uh, these animals can be really big and practically all of them are listed in the FAO list of edible insects. FAO is the, uh, the organization for food and agriculture and uh, they propose to switch to insect protein instead of producing meat um, with cows and pigs and chicken. Because this is an alarming fact, 70% of the agricultural um, land worldwide is used to produce meat and, um, and feed for animals, 70%. So imagine how much we uh, set pressure uh, to cut down rainforests and so on just by uh, relaying only on this kind of meat production. Uh, if we would switch to uh, insect proteins, we could produce this kind of high quality um, animal proteins and fats with only substrates that we cannot eat as humans, like wood or leaf material or wood chips or whatever we give them uh, to feed. But mostly for the production of of meat we have to give to the animals staple food of humans too. That's what we should change and that's also why we uh, propagate this uh, project Food from Wood because food, uh, wood is here so abundantly we have enough material to produce a lot of this animal. So the first stage is this nice uh, larvae and beetles of stag beetles here on this piece of oak. He probably is very happy. Afterwards, after the stag beetle larvae have shredded up all the material, it looks a little bit like this, but it's like a sculptures made by, by the nice beetles here. So you see the holes where the larvae have 
sticks through the wood pieces. Looks like eyes here, or also this little sculpture here uh, is very nice. So that's the work of the stack beetles. And in the next step, that's also what happens in nature. Then come the rhinoceros beetles. Mostly they eat from the leftovers of the stag beetles or they eat themselves and chew themselves on kind of uh, leftovers of the wood blocks of the stag beetles. That's a normal progression in a cascadic process of recycling wood material in nature. This one is a very Nice one, it's a, it's a male Megasomo Dios from Brazil. Lorry can be up to 200 grams heavy. The beetles themselves, they are around maximum 100 grams. And they are pretty big, as you can see here. In the next video, you can also see here a larva, a pupa of Megasomo elephas. It's a uh, Rhinos Hospital from Central uh, America and as you can see in this video they are really big and they contain only the material protein fats that they need uh, for the development into an adult they don't have any gut content anymore that could po pose a problem for people who don't want to eat uh, all this uh, woody material inside of the larva. That's a really big one, so over 10 centimeters long, and this was 82 grams heavy. That's the second stage. All of these animals, they are traditionally eaten by the indigenous people uh, in the rainforests. Um, of course, they are a, 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 a delicious for, for them if they find one. They hope more to find a larva because uh, pupas you find you hardly find they are hidden very well inside of of the of the wood, and the beetles they contain a lot of thorns made of chitin, and if they come into your uh, gut they can um, harm uh, the body and you have to remove therefore all these spiky legs and um, hard material chitin that is uh, not digestible by any animals. Nobody is also protein, of course. It's a proteinic structure, but we cannot uh, digest it. Yeah, next stage. After the rhinoceros beetles have eaten up their part of the material, uh, mostly inside of hollow trees, where also uh, old leaves are blown in by the wind or on the, on the floor of the of the forest, all this half chewed up material left over from the rhinoceros and the stag beetles. That's the field at the end of the rose chevers. That's a larva of a rose chever from um, Africa, Mechunorino uh, polyphemus. It's not a really big larva, but uh, you can see the dimensions around. They can get between 30 to 50 grams a larva, but as you can see here, they contain a little a sack at the end of the gut where they process the food that they eat. They don't process the food themselves, they work together here with microorganisms. The microorganisms, they break up the cellulose, they use the energy from the cellulose to fix nitrogen from the air and then they can grow well in this in this gut and the larva resorbs the microorganisms for the build up of their own protein because that's a real protein protein rich uh, stuff inside of this larva and normally in a piece of wood there are not so much nitrogen they need more that they can grow so big what you see here these uh, pellets, they are not made by a little machine, they are made by the larvas themselves. They suck out all the water of the material, so you don't uh, have to give them extra water. They just eat up the leaves and all this stuff. They take out the water that they need and they, they leave these uh, excremental pellets. And the excremental pellets are three times richer in nitrogen than the original 
uh, feed material for the material for the larva. So that's a real good process of enriching the soil with nitrogen, especially in countries uh, where uh, nitrogen is um, lacked in the in the substrate. Let's say in developing in developing countries. Normally in our industrialized agriculture we have too much nitrogen because we import all the food, all this nitrogen uh, rich material in uh, millions of tons and we put it on our fields and uh, that's what makes them uh, too, um, too, too much nitrogenic. And also that's the problem it's washed out into the rivers and so on. that's one of the problems. But for the developing countries it's very nice to see that we have a technique uh, to enrich the plant material and the soil with nitrogen naturally because in the techni technical aspect of producing uh, nitrogen we need a lot, a lot, a lot of electric energy and this would be nice to produce it on a small scale, uh, small form, practically anywhere. So that's the, the process of it. Now if we go back once again, what we can see, plants, they need the light of the sun as a source of energy. They need water and uh, carbon dioxide. With this process, they make uh, produce glucose in the photosynthesis. They invest the glucose into fruits, berries or whatever uh, to attract animals to help them spread uh, the seeds of the plants and to help spread uh, the plants in the world. Also we can eat it of course, but we, we, we like sugar also very much. And then the plants can um, combine some of these glucoses in a way to produce a more storable form of, uh, of energy in the form of starch, mostly used in grains as an energy reserve or also in potatoes like this are mostly starch. And the third material is probably the most important. They need a building structure material, the plants, to reach up high into the sky more than 100 meters uh, to present the leaves to the sunlight. And this material is that one, wood. It's also a combination of glucose in a spiralic form. It's very uh, tough and, um, and strong and it has also the advantage that animals cannot use it as feed. So it's also it's too hard. If, if even they could eat it, they couldn't digest it. And the mushrooms can. So that's why we have to make these three uh, two steps. We have first have to present uh, this wooden material to mushrooms. Also in the form of these uh, wood chips we have um, mushrooms, edible mushrooms, that also can eat up these chips of wood that are very common in our uh, forest agriculture. And we can use also all the leaves that fall, fell, fall down from the trees, all the little twigs and so on. And with this material that is pre processed by edible mushrooms, we can feed insects, edible insects, and have at the end an enriched nitrogen, enriched naturally grown uh, palletized uh, gardening soil. Yeah, some questions. Um, mostly they say, what is with the invasive organisms? Do they disturb the biodiversity? in our place, so that is not the case with these tropical kind of animals, because in our temperate region they cannot survive, they need temperatures between 25 and 30 degrees, and as, as soon as it goes below 10 degrees they will die, as uh, adults um, and as uh, a worry. One of the things that is interesting for in our western world is that we can use these animals in urban farming. As you can imagine, a bedroom in a two in a two uh, chamber flat is not perfect ground for keeping cattle or a chicken in the bathroom or wherever. So these 
Animals mostly are too big, but insects, they can be perfect organisms uh, to keep in urban farms. You can keep them without light, in a garage, in a closed room somewhere. Uh, they don't smell bad. That's one of the advantages too. They always smell like the forest soil. Um, they can be um, fed with material that you find everywhere, also in the cities, all these uh, leaves, material, they are collected normally, and if you can feed your um, urban insects with this, that would be a good uh, idea. And also, it's for educational reasons, it's uh, nice so that young people who are interested in urban farming show to the elder generations like me how we can easily change from eating uh, meat from pigs and cattle and fish also to eating insects. That's also why we said not uh, edible insects, so we say sky food. Like seafood is animals from the sea, we say sky food to edible insects because insects have been the first animals on planet Earth that could uh, fly. It was around 100 million years before the dinosaurs already. So that's about the project uh, Food from Wood. Um, we just started organizing the whole research project. Of course, we need a lot of support from people like you. Um, also support financially because, uh, you know, there's a, not a lot of funds that um, support edible insect project because it's a new topic and that's also why it's a little bit difficult to um, crowdfund, uh, to fund um, money for this uh, project. But uh, we are um, we're sure that we can find uh, somebody who supports us with reorganizing the decomposing process of wood-based plant materials. Thanks for watching.